nice to hear a little before about the history of email. Um, as it happens, I'm terrible at email. No matter how hard I try, I can't seem to clear out my inbox. And if I had a penny for every time I've written an email, which begins with a line like, I'm so sorry for the delay in writing back to you, I could probably buy dinner for all of you. But, um, you know, this digital inundation that we face is not just about email, and it's not just me. Think about how many times each day you check your phone. Think about how many hours you spend sitting in front of a screen. And this saturation, it's not just overwhelming at times, it can actually be dehumanizing. We are physical, emotional, sensory beings. And, you know, live in this room right now, for example, we have almost 5,000 breathing, living organisms. We feel different things. Some of us might feel tired, some feel wide awake, others are warm, others are cold. One of us might even feel a little bit nervous. But <laughs> with technologies they often, that we use every day, they often overlook these feelings and instead focus on delivering speed and efficiency. In 1917, the great pioneer of electronic music, Edgar Varese, said, I dream of instruments obedient to my thought and which, with their introduction of a world of unsuspected sounds, will lend themselves to the exigencies of my inner rhythm. He wasn't just talking about music. He wanted technology to enhance his humanity. And I think that that question is still relevant today. How are we to be fully human in the face of an increasingly digital world? One way of answering that question is to turn to the past, to the first ever digital technology. So some will tell you that the first digital technology is the abacus. The, with an abacus, you can take each bead up and down, and in so doing, you can really do arithmetic. You can, come, you can calculate numbers. But if that makes it digital, then in fact, we can go back even further. Our own fingers can provide a one or a zero simply by holding them up and down. And although the Latin um, digitus is the root of the word digital, and it means fingers. Neither an abacus nor our fingers are truly digital. They're analog. They create one-to-one -one relationships. For something, to be, for something to be truly digital, there needs to be a series of ones and zeros, which can be used to mediate and transform an input into a different kind of output. So I ask you, what is the world's first digital technology? Here's a hint we have uh, one of the world's most beautiful specimens of it right in this room with us. Talk about physical sensation. I think we can all still feel that reverberation. Now, the first organ was invented in ancient Greece over 2,000 years ago. It was called a hydralis, a water organ. And why was it digital? Because each key is a zero or a one, on or off. Each stop, in or out, each pipe, and this organ has 9,999 pipes, either open or closed. And thus, the organist controls a set of binary configurations to create layer upon layer of sound. The very power of the organ was that it isn't human. It, its size, its volume, its intensity evokes the omnipotence of the divine. So the genius, though, of the piano was that it humanized the organ by allowing a more dynamic touch and a more voice-like sound. The piano Forte, it brought the soft and loud together with precise, distinct pitches, and in so doing, it created a new synthesis between the analog and the digital, between the human and the other.
piano was the first object that I truly loved. I started playing as soon as I could sit up, and I can remember being captivated by the way in which a simple row of black and white keys could be coaxed into producing rich music. But after playing for many years, I became disillusioned. I was jealous of the expressive capabilities of other instruments, the timbral changes, the modulations, the bend, and this continuous control in real time felt to me like it could express the inside of human subjectivity. And so, sitting at the piano, my fingers began to explore and imagine a new way of playing that would connect musical fluidity with every moment of physical contact. I envisioned melting the keys of the piano into a single continuous surface such that every note would become interconnected and fully alive. And from this physical desire to bring sensation and sound into a more intimate relationship, I invented a new musical instrument. I called it the seaboard because its wave-like surface reminded me of an ocean, and I made it from a material so soft and so sensitive that even touches that we usually only associate with human interaction, such as a caress, would become musically meaningful. What can this story of the organ, the piano, and the seaboard tell us about how to infuse humanity into the digital? The secret lies right in the word digital itself. These same fingers which provide us with an immediate analogy for numbers, these hands with which we fashion tools and by extension build the world, these digits enable us to sensually express what is within and centrally experience what is without. Now, sensation is, of course, ubiquitous in our digital lives. Even the kind of reaching out that one does when one responds to an email requires a physical act. And I'd like to think the reason I'm no good at email is that typing doesn't capture the real feeling of human contact. But when you ask, how should we be more human 
in this digital world? Perhaps the answer is that by reinventing technologies that are more sensitive to our touch, we can somehow feel our way into new depths of expression and new heights of experience. Thank you very much, and please give a round of applause to uh, Andrew Brownwell on the organ, Hao Chen on the piano, and Kim Wai on the seaboard. Thank you. Thank you very much, Roland. Am I right that was the world premiere of that instrument, Roland? Was that the world premiere? Yeah. First public performance of that instrument in the world. So in the world. Thank you.